Welcome back to the shop. Just got my hands on a new tool. Today, we're gonna to see why a metal worker needs this piece of plastic. Its versatility will surprise you. A few months ago, I ran across a Kickstarter campaign from a company called Shaper Tools that promised to be able to turn a hand sketch into a vector graphic with just a smartphone app and a special frame. I work a lot with vector graphics when cutting things on my plasma table, so I was definitely interested. After reading more about the campaign, I realized this product had a lot of special features that really made it stand out. First, the uh, app has the ability to detect the thickness of a line and produce either a center line or an outline as shown here on the letter B. Second, the product can also do um, some smoothing on jagged lines for people like me that failed second grade art class. And then lastly, the app has the ability to deselect part of the sketch that really helps with speeding up post-processing in software like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. With all of these features built in, I was definitely interested, so I decided to back the project. To put this thing through its paces, I want to make something that requires some dimensional accuracy. So I figured we'd start off by trying to produce this wrench. In order to do that, we will trace the wrench on a white piece of paper. We'll then put the frame over the white paper and we will snap a picture of the hand sketch with the frame around it using the included Shaper Trace app. That app then converts the hand sketch into a scalable vector graphic or SVG. We'll use the SVG then to create a cut file that we will cut out on the Crossfire Pro. And then finally we'll test it to see how good of a job we did. Okay, so let's go ahead, trace the outline of the wrench. This is a little difficult being at the angle. We'll see how good of a job we can do. All right, let's see how we did. Close a couple of these. It's not too bad. It'd be interesting to see if we can actually get the nut in here. This is pretty hard to trace. All right, let's give that a go. Here we are in the Shaper Trace app. We've got to get a picture of the frame. There we go. Just that easy, we're scanned in. We will save this to Shaper Files. We'll go ahead and do an outline and a center line just to see if one works better than the other. Here are the SVGs downloaded from uh, the Shaper Trace website. This first one here is the outline. SVG, and then I'll switch over. This is the center line SVG. And you can see there's not a whole lot of difference here. Um, both ended up with kind of this dual line running uh, both the out, the inside and outside of what I traced. And um, this is expected for the outline uh, version, which is this one right here. But the center line, what it should have done is actually drawn a line down the center of um, the thickness of the line that I uh, traced it with. And after doing some research, this is actually not a fault of uh, the Shaper Trace app. 
but is rather a fault of how I traced it. And I'll throw a, a picture of, of the original tracing back on the screen here in a second, but you'll see where I've got kind of multiple lines overlapping. And the way when I did it that way, I ended up confusing the algorithm and it just threw uh, two lines down. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, still use the centerline app here, uh, or centerline version, and um, we'll try to get this fixed and sent over to Fusion 360 for the actual cup file. But you can see here, I mean, the, the, the trace is, is pretty impressive. Um, it, it looks like a wrench. There's a, a little bit to be desired here on the, the box inside, and that is, again, not the app. That's my fault in tracing. Um, there is a little bit of confusion right here, and I'm going to try to correct some of this here. I'm using Inkscape. Uh, try to correct some of this right now, uh, and then we'll fix the rest of it in Fusion 360. That is good enough for now. So we will go ahead and save that. And then we'll go into Fusion 360. Go ahead and make a sketch on the top plane. And we will insert that SVG. Which is one, open it, Let's see where it's at here. There it is. All right, we'll move it into position. This isn't perfect, but I mean, that's Kind of the point we want to see if this is going to work with just a hand trace sketch okay um, so here's the wrench go ahead and save the model and we will move into the manufacturer side of fusion 360. we will run an initial setup i like to start all my um, cuts really at the lower left hand corner this is just makes life easy for me when I'm setting it up on the plasma table. All right, so here's our setup. We'll go into the cutting menu. We gotta select our machine. I've preloaded the prime load uh, cut 60 in there. That's what we will select. Um, and I just noticed we are in uh, the wrong units. So I will go back, modify, the units to be inch cut. Okay, there we are. We've got to select our machine again. And cutting feed rate, I'm going to cut this out of 10 gauge. Um, so I usually cut this at 45 amps and 85 inches per minute. We'll get that set up. Select our geometry. There we go. This all looks great. We will run a lead in, but we will deselect lead out. And then our preferred lead in position, let's just find the node here on the straight side. It'll be easy to clean up. We'll select there. Let Fusion 360 do its job. Okay, um, so it's generated the cut path. I like to simulate that just to make sure things make sense. So we'll go ahead and simulate this cut path. And there we go, that looks like it's gonna work. We'll exit the simulation and we will post-process this. All right, there we are. We've posted our NC code. Uh, next up is time to cut it on the plasma table, see how we did. Thank <laughs> you. 
We finished cutting, we've got our part. All I have done is to clean the dross off of the edges. Other than that, it's untouched. We've got our original trace and then the part we pulled off the plasma table. Looking at the open end, looks great as expected. The trace is very, very clean. So it, it translated over to the cut part perfectly. Uh, the open end leaves a little bit to be desired, but it's not surprising based on the trace. Um, the app was uh, not working with the best trace, so it's not surprising that this doesn't look the greatest. Uh, but being a wrench, it, who cares what it looks like? Let's see if it works. So first, we've got our 3 8 bolt here. We'll check the open end and not surprisingly fits over. Everything works great. The box end, while well, aesthetically it doesn't look great, it seems to work in all positions. Well, that couldn't have been easier. Whether it's quickly prototyping tools or logos and other designs, the Shaper Trace at a price point of around $100 is definitely worth the investment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Is it, when are we ready? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at that. I already forgot what I was going to say.